Yes, Roma wines taste better because only Roma selects from the world's greatest wine reserves for your pleasure. And now, Roma Wines, R-O-M-A. Roma Wines present... Suspense! Tonight, Roma Wines bring you Mr. Phil Silvers in The Swift Rise of Eddie Albright. A suspense play produced, edited, and directed for Roma Wines by William Spears. Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills, is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. Those better-tasting California wines enjoyed by more Americans than any other wine. For friendly entertaining, for delightful dining. Yes, right now a glass full would be very pleasant as Roma Wines bring you Phil Silvers in a remarkable tale of... Suspense! Up car, please. Good morning, Mr. Griffin. Good morning. Get back in the car, please. Well, good morning, Miss Wainwright. Hello, Eddie. Good morning, Miss Kittredge. Take it away, Eddie. That's all, please. Watch the doors, please. Two, please. Three. Four, please. Well, that's the way it is with me all day long, see? I got my ups and downs, like they say. But I like it that way, see? Because I'm not going to be doing this forever. I'm not even going to be doing it very much longer at all. Because I got a job as an assistant to Mr. Garvey, the building manager. And the way I handle my car and my customers, I'm going to be a cinch to get it. In fact, I am so much a cinch that I have told Millie that that's what I am already. Millie is the manicure at the elite barbershop down on Lake Street. And three, four times a week on my off hour, I jump out of my uniform and into my street clothes and go down there and get a manicure. I sort of got Millie staked out, see. And that's where I am on this day when all this happens. Down there getting a manicure for Millie. I that you got real nice hands, though, Mr. Albright. Real swan gay. Well, you see, for a man in my position... But I will also say that you don't really have to have them cared for quite so often. Oh, that... I mean, I wouldn't tell that to everyone, but some of my customers, I like to give them my very best professional advice, you know? Well, maybe I... Oh. Just let your hand relax, Mr. Albright. Yeah. Well... Maybe I know that. Maybe I got my reasons. Uh, Mr. Albright, I can't imagine what kind of reasons you'd Look, have. with a guy like me, nobody has to stand on many ceremonies, see? For instance, all my friends call me Eddie. Really? Sure, Mr. Garvey and everybody. Just like I call you Millie. That's all right, isn't it? Oh, well, sure, but, but me calling a customer, but, well, it makes a difference, you is, know? Is that all I am? Just another customer? Ooh. You must hold your hand still, Mr. Albright. Yeah, sure. For what I mean, just because I hold a slightly higher position than somebody else, that don't make any difference to me. That's my idea of democracy. Everybody is just as good as anybody else. Of course, and unless you're a millionaire or something. Oh, well, what's so special about a millionaire? I got a customer that's a millionaire, and his hands aren't nearly as swan gay as yours. Well, what I mean is, I'm not quite in that class yet. But I wish you would call me Eddie. Well, you know, I was thinking about you. Huh? Once or twice. I mean, you're quite young to be holding a position of assistant manager of a big building like the Dunbar Building. Well, I started at the bottom, of course, but there's little tricks in getting to the top, just like in everything else. Gee, I wish I knew some. Well, take me, for instance. You know how I got where I am? Remembering names and faces, that's how. Yeah? Yes, sir. When I was just merely an elevator operator... Remembering names? You mean a little thing like that can get you to... A the... little thing like that? Listen, how do you suppose Jim Farley got where he is today? Where is he? I don't know where he is right now, but that's how he got to be Postmaster General. Just remembering names and faces. Just one little thing, that's all. Well, I don't know. He must have had some kind of other abilities. I mean, he must have been a bug on stamps or something. Oh, Kevin said that. Look at that cuticle. Well, maybe one, two little things, but that was the main thing. Now, take me for it. Oh. oh, I'm sorry, Eddie, but you've got to keep your hands still, you know. Oh, that's okay, Millie. Forget it. But I was just trying to show you something in the paper. See this picture? Yeah. Frankie the Nose Maddox, former New York gangster who escaped from Atlanta six months ago, believed to be in the city. Oh, sure, I saw that this morning. Yeah, so did I. And when I saw it, I said to myself, Eddie, you, Eddie Albright, you've seen this guy somewhere before. And just like that, I remembered. Oh, well, I bet I could remember an ugly mug like that. Yeah, but suppose you only seen him three, four times, and it was two, three years ago. And he was always with a whole lot of other people. <gasps> Eddie! 
Eddie, you mean you know Frankie Maddox? No, but I took him up in my car. Uh, that was when I was just merely an elevator operator. Uh. I took him up three, four times. There's a rich guy named Ellinger lives in a penthouse on top of our building, and I took him up there. And that was two, three years ago. But right away I remembered, he called the face. Oh, I guess that is pretty good, all right. Sure, that's the kind of thing that got me where I am. Yeah, well, some people are lucky, I guess. Well, I don't know. But some people that are lucky like to share their luck with other people. Ever stop to think about that? Well, I'm quite sure I don't know what you mean. Well, take you and me, for example. What? Maybe we could be lucky together. I mean, maybe you and me could go out to dinner and the theater some night. Really? Oh, gee, that'd be awful nice. Well, how about tonight? Tonight? Well, I don't know. I... Well, I guess I could make it tonight. Okay, now where do I need... Well, well, well. So this is where you spend all your time. Oh, hello, Alex. (laughs) Millie, uh, I just remembered something important. I gotta go. Yeah, but Eddie, I haven't finished yet. What's your hurry? You might at least introduce the little lady to your boss. No, no, don't say that. Oh, dear. Then you must be Mr. Garvey. Well, I'm sure I'm pleased to meet you. Mr. Garvey? (laughs) Ha, ha, ha. Say, what's this guy been telling you? Well, I, no, well, Millie, I really I... don't see what's so funny. No, All I know not... is that Mr. Albright here what? is Mr. Garvey's personal assistant in the Dunbar building. <laughs> oh, I... Is that what he told Look, you? Look, Alex, <laughs> can I just... Oh, Eddie, I'm ashamed. How could you do such a thing to such a cute little lady? Eddie Albright, you going to sit there and let this man talk to me? He like... better sit there because I am his boss. Millie, look. I'm cheap starter on the Dunbar elevators, and little Eddie here is operator number 23. <gasps> Eddie. And when I say go, he goes. And when I say stay, he stays. Millie, no, look, Millie, I gotta I go, but I... haven't finished your hand, Mr. Albright. Oh, Millie, let's not be bitter. Well, goodbye. Well, you can imagine how that made me feel. I felt lower in the third basement. And what made it worse, it was all true, what I told Millie. I all except the little part about being Mr. Garvey's assistant. But I did remember faces. I was going to get to the top. I was there already, practically. But all I could think of was how I could get even with that starter, that Alex Henderson, without having him fire me. And pretty soon he came back, and I just didn't speak to him. I didn't even look at him. But I could see him grinning all over that ugly pussy his every time he looks at me. And then I see him looking serious and going over to talk to some guys that just came in that I recognize as plain clothes did. And then they separate and sort of hang around the lobby trying to look as though they aren't there. And I figure I'll buy my time to get to that, Alex. So pretty soon I mosey over to where he is. Well, 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 if it isn't Mr. Albright. Okay, okay, you had your fun. What are all the dicks doing in the lobby? Well, now, I wouldn't tell everyone, but, of course, an important man like you... Oh, lay off, can't you? What's going on? They had a tip Frankie Maddox was heading for this building. Frankie Maddox? Yeah. Friend of yours? Well, I know what he looks like. I took him up to the penthouse three, four times. Two, three years ago. I never forget. Yeah? Who was with him? General MacArthur? Now, look, I'm not kidding. I'd remember him any place. Well, why don't you just go over and speak to the lieutenant over there? Okay, I will. Get back on your car. But, Alex... Get back on your... Well, 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 look who's coming in the door. Our girlfriend. Our girlfriend? Oh, listen, Alex, I can take just... How do you do, Miss O'Malley? Oh, well, I'm quite well, thank you, Mr. Henderson. Hello, Millie. I wonder if you could have one of your boys take me up to the penthouse. We got a call at the shop a little while ago from Mr. Ellinger. He wanted a manicure sent up. Why, sure, Miss O'Malley, the last car there. Thank you very kindly, Mr. Henderson. Eddie, take the young lady up to the penthouse. Right away. Look sharp. Millie. The penthouse, please. Now, listen, Millie. I can explain all what I and said. And I do not wish to engage in any unnecessary conversation with the help, Mr. Albright. Oh, Millie. That guy's jealous, that's all. He knows when that job comes up, I'm a cinch for it, and he won't stand a chance. Huh? He's just trying to get the knife for me, that's all. <laughs> and that job is coming up, and I'm going to get it. Any day now. You'll see. <laughs> oh, Millie. Give me a break. You said yourself it didn't matter even if a guy was a millionaire. I am a very democratic person, Mr. Albright. I have no objection at all to a man being an elevator operator whatsoever. But I do object to his being a big phony. Mm -hmm. I believe this is my floor. Good day, Mr. Albright. Millie. Uh... Hold it, bud. 
Huh? You heard him hold it. I'm sorry, but you gentlemen can't bring that copper down on this car. You'll have to take the freight out of it. Shut up. Now, listen, Get I... in there. All right, easy now. Okay, stand up, uh, stand it up in that corner. Well, of course, if you gentlemen insist. Okay, that'll do it. Our policy is to give prompt and courteous service to all the occupants of this building. Okay, However, but the regulation... start down. But it's against regulations. Start down. Yes, sir. But it's against regulations to carry furniture in the passenger car. And a big carpet like that. Now, what about a big carpet like that? Well, it's furniture. Well, what do you know? Sonny Boy here thinks this is furniture. Well, it ain't furniture, you see, Sonny Boy? Well, the regulations are specific. Yes, sir. What floor, sir? The basement. Yes, sir. Which basement? You ain't trying to be funny, are you, Sonny Boy? No, sir, but we have three basements in this building. You all got like stairs point... up to the street? Yeah, they have stairs, but yeah, it is. Take isn't. us to the first one you come to. Yes, sir. But the building regulations. Oh, shut is clearly... up. Yes, sir. Well, like I say, we believe in giving prompt and courteous service. So I wasn't going to argue with anybody, particularly anybody as big and tough as these two guys look. They wanted to take a carpet to the basement? Well, oh, there's no skin off my knees. It was a big carpet, all right. It was rolled up, and they had it standing in the corner between them. And I glanced at it, just casual-like. And then I saw something that made my skin come up in goosebumps all over. Sticking out of the bottom of that carpet was a pair of feet. Hey, those guys had a dead body in that carpet. For suspense, Roma Wines are bringing you Phil Silvers in the swift rise of Eddie Albright. Roma Wines' presentation tonight in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Between the acts of suspense, this is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines. Make your Easter Sunday a day of gracious hospitality with America's favorite wine. That's Roma Wine, R-O-M-A, Roma, enjoyed by more Americans than any other wine. Your guests will enjoy glorious golden amber Roma California sherry. And to bring out the full goodness of that ham or turkey dinner, serve Roma California Burgundy or Sauterne. Whichever Roma wine you serve, you enjoy an important difference, a superiority in fuller bouquet, richer body, and better taste. That's because Roma selects California's choicest grapes. Then, Roma master vintners with America's finest winemaking resources guide this grape treasure unhurriedly to tempting taste perfection. Later, with Roma wines of years before, these choice treasures await selection from the world's greatest wine reserves for your pleasure. So tomorrow, for your best buy in good taste, insist on Roma wine. R-O-M-A, Roma. The greatest name in wine. And now, Roma Wines bring back to our Hollywood soundstage Phil Silvers in The Swift Rise of Eddie Albright, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Well, when I saw those two tough guys had a body rolled up in that carpet, I just stood there at the controls of my car and tried to keep my knees from knocking until we got down to the first basement. Is this the basement? Huh? I say, is this the basement? Oh, oh yes, sir. Okay. All right. Let's lift it easy. Right, Can I help you? Uh, hey, no, never mind. No. Hey, you got it? Oh, okay. Oh, oh. okay. Set it down. <sighs> All right, sonny boy. You can beat it. Yes, sir. And, uh, listen, bud. Yes, sir? If I was you, I'd forget I ever seen this, uh, carpet. Understand? Yes, sir. What carpet? My next car, please. Well, where you been, big shot? Oh, oh, I had to take a tenner down to, uh, to the, to the basement. The basement? Yeah. Somebody from the penthouse wanted 
uh, wanted to see the super about something. Oh, I see. I thought you was going to stick around and help the cops catch Maddox when he shows up. Okay, Alex, you think I'm kidding, but I do know him. What he looks like. Yeah, with his mug all over the paper, sure. You and a million other people. I mean what he looks like. For... Instance, I remember he's a medium-sized small guy about my size. Oh, a shrimp. All right, but you wait. If that guy comes into this building, I'll spot him and I'll... All right, him everybody, all right. Just stand right where you are, please. That's the lieutenant. It must be Maddox. Maddox. Now, there's no danger, folks. No danger. We're just trying to locate somebody. Say, I gotta go. You stay here. I just remembered a party up on the 15th floor. You stay. But see, I figured the cops had everything under control about this Maddox, and there was no use of my button in until they need me. And so I'm sort of getting my breath and going past the ninth floor before I notice the little guy in the car with me. A nice-looking little guy, and he speaks to me real friendly. What's all the excitement down there? Oh, well, they think some gangster named Maddox is loose in the building somewhere. Do they? Yeah. Maybe it was a good idea we started up and we did, huh? Oh, I don't know. Don't worry me none. What floor? Uh, the, uh, the penthouse, please. Oh, you're looking for Mr. Ellinger. That's right. My girl's up there with him right now. Your girl? Yeah, she's a manicure. Mr. Ellinger sent for her a little while ago for a manicure. Oh. Well, here's your floor. Uh, say, wait a minute before you open those doors. I, uh, got a little proposition to make to you. Uh, proposition? Yeah, you see, Mr. Ellinger's an old pal of mine. He's a great guy for gags. I haven't seen him for quite a while. I want to pull one on him, see? Oh, well, yeah, but... but I want to borrow your uniform. If we just swap coats, that's enough. It'll only take a minute. The whole thing. Oh, I'm sorry. I couldn't do anything like that. The regulations... Sure, are... sure, I know. Uh, would, uh... Would this help? Oh, no, I couldn't. You see, if... A hundred bucks? Sure, with me and Ellinger, it's anything for a gag, and, uh... Like I say, it'll only take a minute. Well, I don't know. But a hundred bucks? Oh, here, go on, take it. Now, give me your coat. Here's mine. Well... You sure it'll only take a minute? That's right. Okay. Here you are. Okay, now let's go. Uh, you better come with me, though, so you can get your coat back and go right on down. See? Yeah, sure. I'll prop the car doors open. I'm sorry. Millie! Millie! Albright, for heaven's sake, now what? Who is she? Oh, that's my, uh, that's Millie that I told you about. Oh, where's Ellinger? Well, I'm sure I don't know, and I've been waiting quite a while, and if I have to wait much longer... You I... sure he's not home? Well, I should be. Now, if I have to wait much longer, I'm simply going to have to charge him the full rate anyway, and if you're a friend of his, I wish you'd yeah, tell Yeah, sure, him. sure, I'll, uh, I'll I... fix it for you. We'll come in and wait. As for you, Mr. Albright, of course, no business of mine. But if you want to throw away your job and your whole career... I got my I... reasons, Come on. Millie. Well... Yeah, but you said it would only take a minute. Come on, come on. There's another hundred in it for you when you get your coat back. A hundred dollars? See? I told your you. Your boyfriend and I are just pulling a little gag, miss. Boyfriend? Are you implicating that this... Well, I must say, someone has given you the wrong kind of an oppression entirely. Yeah, okay, but you two could do quite a lot with a couple of hundred bucks, couldn't you? Suppose, uh, you wait here in the front room, miss. We'll go on inside. But don't tell Mr. Ellinger we're here. We want to surprise him. Yes, sir, of course. That's two hundred dollars. Listen, I can't wait long, you know. Yes, sure, I know. In here. Uh, let's, uh, go out on the balcony. Ah, uh, it's nice up here. Yeah, I always wanted a penthouse. You know, with them looking all over for this, uh, Maddox, or uh, whatever his name is, they won't miss you for a while. Yeah, there's that. But boy, I just wish I could lay my hands on that guy. Oh, Maddox? Yeah, boy, if I could just capture him single-handed or something. What's the matter? You got something against the guy? Oh, no, no, Mr. Uh... Mason. No, Mr. Mason, I got nothing against him. But I gotta do something pretty quick. Fooling around with guys like this Maddox could be a little unhealthy, though, couldn't it? Yeah, there's that. But, well, you see, Mr. Mason, I gotta do something for Millie. Oh. <laughs> I don't know, she seems like a nice kid. She doesn't seem like the kind who'd expect any crazy grandstand plays from a guy. Oh, she wouldn't, Mr. Mason. Millie's the top. She's aces. But you see, well, I already made one and it flopped. It was a terrible flop. Oh, showing off for a dame, huh? Like a little kid. Yeah, I guess so, Mr. Mason. I guess I made an awful fool out of myself. But, well, now I gotta do something to make up for it. Listen, Eddie, a dame that's any good, she doesn't expect anything special of a guy. If she does lay off because she's poisoned, take my word for it, I know. 
Maybe I wouldn't be where I am today if I hadn't tried to show off for a dame. Just like you. I was a punk kid. I didn't know any better. Gee, Mr. Mason, I wouldn't say where you are today is so bad. Being able to pass out $100 bills like you do. Yeah. Well, you get older. You see things a little different sometimes. How'd you come to louse it up with her? Well, you see, it began by me telling about this job that I got as assistant to Mr. Garvey, the building manager. Only I don't have it yet. And then Alex. He's the starter. He tips her off. And then I'm trying to explain to her when I bring her up here. Only I don't get a chance because these two mugs get in my car with a what big What two cover. mugs? The two that come from the penthouse here. I guess they're waiting for Mr. Ellinger. And they got a big rolled up carpet. And they want to go down to the basement. And I call on the regulations, but... Gee, maybe I shouldn't be saying this after what they told me. What did they tell you? Well, about the carpet, they said. Carpet. So that's it. Well, I guess it's okay to tell you, Mr. Mason. But I was scared. Well... There was a body in that carpet. Gosh, you don't suppose that's why Mr. Allen... listen, Eddie. You stay right here, see? But Mr. Mason, my coat... You... I'll be back in two minutes, kid. Then you'll be all set. The basement, huh? Yeah, but Mr. Wait, wait, Mr. Mason... You stay here. You want your coat back. Oh. Well, Mr. All right, I see your newfound friend has left you holding the bag. Oh, Millie, I don't know. Everything has gone wrong today. Well, you can't say that your friends or those who were your friends didn't give you fair warning. You mean you're still my friend? I didn't say that. I just hope that Mr. Alex Henderson is your friend when you try to explain to him what happened to your uniform coat. Alex Henderson. Listen, Millie, you don't see anything in that guy, do you? Well, he's just I a common Mr. starter. I think Mr. Henderson is a very high-type gentleman and not a big phony. Him? Why, well, he's the worst. And at least he is not ashamed of his position. He is, too. And seeing that he is your superior, yeah, I Yeah, well, feel he won't be for that... long. I can tell you that right now. All right, Maddox. Reach. What? Don't try to stall, Max. Get him up. They got guns. Maddox. Hey, listen, I'm not Maddox. What do you I'm... think you're kidding we know you've been having a doctor change your face the last six months. And then you think you're going to walk right in here and knock off Ellinger for that 50 grand he took you for. Well, you were a little late. You know why? Listen, fellas, you got it wrong. Don't you remember? I'll tell you I'm... why. Because and I... we got tipped off and we got Ellinger out of here in a carpet. How do you like that? You know who is going to get it? You, Maddox. <gasps> oh, no. <sighs> hey, look, my girl, she fainted. And she's in luck. Any last words, Maddox? Oh, wait, listen, I'm not Maddox. I'm the elevator boy. That's I never I... thought I'd see you crawl, Maddox. Look, don't you remember? I took you down with the carpet to the basement. Go on, go ahead. I'm getting a big boot out of this. Hey, wait a minute. Maybe he's got something. Come over here, you. Yes, sir. Why, I think it is the elevator punk. That's me, sir. That's right. The elevator punk. That's me. Shut up. What do you think? I don't know. What happened to your uniform, punk? Well, there was a man. He was in my car. All right, turn around and get it. Maddox! What happened those next few minutes, I'll never know. I was down on the floor until the shooting stopped, and then it was awful still, and I opened one eye and looked around, and Mr. Mason, only he was Maddox, I recognized him. And the two mugs were lying on the floor, and they weren't moving either. And then I saw Millie lying there, too, and I rushed over to her. And I took her in my arms, and then she opened her eyes, so I knew she was all right. So I rushed back to Mr. Maddox to see if I could help him. On the counter, he was nice to me, whatever he was. But he was dead all right, I guess. And I took the gun out of his hand, and then all of a sudden, the room was full of people. Cops and Alex Henderson, and even Mr. Garvey, and they were all crowding around me, and everybody was saying something different. Uh, it's Maddox, all right, Chief. He's got identification. What happened here? Is that the missing operator, Henderson? That's right, Mr. Garvey. Who's the girl? My officer. He's got a gun in his hand. Uh, give me that, son. Uh, yes, sir. Well. Say, son, you must have been mixed up in this little party yourself, huh? Where'd you get the gun? Well, Lieutenant... It's sorry. Maddox's gun, isn't it? That's right, Chief. That's what must have happened. Maddox gunned the two hoods, and then the kid jumped him. Yeah? Well, that took a lot of courage, son. Is uh, that what happened? Well, sir, I... Go ahead, Eddie. Speak up. Don't be afraid. Oh, no, Mr. Garvey. I'm not afraid. I'm Just perfectly... tell us what happened, son. Well, what happened? Yes, sir. That's what happened, all right. What you said. Uh, Mr. Maddox made me come in here and change clothes with him. And then those two came in and Maddox shot them. And then, well, I just sort of overpowered him. And, and the gun went off and, and he was killed. I know guys on the force wouldn't have dared do that. Eddie! Did she see it? I fainted. Well, say, young man, you certainly are to be congratulated. Thanks, Mr. Garvey. Yes, sir. You're the type of man we need on the Dunbar building staff, which uh, reminds me. There's a position as my personal assistant coming open. I think you could fill it. 
Come and talk to me about it in the morning. Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Garvey. Oh, Eddie. Hey, Chief. Yeah? Look, Maddox. He's alive. So he is. Yeah. He can talk. He can talk? How about it, Maddox? Is that what happened? What, uh, happened? The kid here says you gunned the other two and he overpowered you. And you got it in the struggle for the gun. Is uh, that what happened? The, uh, the kid there overpowered me? Oh. Yeah, 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 sure. The, uh, yeah, the kid just, uh, overpowered me. He's gone. Gosh. <laughs> The reason I told this, well, Millie and I got married when I got the job of Mr. Garvey, and, well, something pretty important is going to happen pretty soon, and, well, I got to think of what Mr. Maddox said, and and I told Millie the whole thing, because I didn't want to have a kid who could ever say his old man was a big phony. Hello, Eddie. I mean, uh, good morning, Mr. Albright. Alex? Uh, uh car three, sir? Uh, take Mr. Albright right up. Oh, thank you, Alex. Uh, I've been watching your work. You're doing grand. Grand. Now, just look alive. Well, shall we go? Up, up, quickly, boy. Up. Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines. R-O-M-A, Roma. America's favorite wines. This is Truman Bradley bringing back to our microphone the star of tonight's suspense play, Phil Silvers. Well, Phil, as a screen comedian, your usual job is to keep people in stitches rather than in suspense. Tell me, how did you like the change tonight? Truman, believe me, it's a lot easier to make people scared than it is to make them smile. Well, would a top-flight comedian like yourself object to a tip on how to make folks smile? Hey, the last time I got a good tip was when a guy mistook me for a waiter. But go on ahead. Old Silver's needs a little polish. My judge, that's a good one. Polish, did you get it? <laughs> well, Phil, if you want to see smiles of satisfaction on the faces of your friends, just serve them Roma wine. To help you, here's a hamper of Roma wines with the compliments of Roma, the greatest name in wine. Say, hey, I'll take that tip and the Roma wine with thanks, Truman. Among the fine Roma wines in your hamper, Phil, you'll find a bottle of Roma California Burgundy. Roma Burgundy is good any time and a special favorite at Easter. Millions prefer Roma Burgundy as the perfect flavor mate with a traditional Easter ham, turkey, or roast. Yes, red, robust Roma Burgundy with its full, fragrant bouquet and tempting taste brings out all the rich, natural flavor of red meats, adds friendliness, good taste, and distinction to any meal. Roma Burgundy it is, Truman. And Phil, in all Roma wines, you enjoy an important difference, an extra goodness in fuller bouquet, richer body, and better taste. Yes, Roma wines taste better because Roma selects the better-tasting wines from the world's greatest reserves. That's why more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. Well, that's good enough for me, Truman. And may I add a credit? Phil Silvers is currently being seen in his living room. Thank you. You've been devoted. Tonight's suspense play was written by Roy Grandy and Robert Richards. Next Thursday, same time, you will hear Mr. Kirk Douglas as star of Suspense. Produced and directed by William Spear for the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California. In the coming weeks, Suspense will present such stars as Ava Gardner, David Niven, Lloyd Nolan, Lynn Barry, and others. Make it a point to listen each Thursday to Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills. Stay tuned for the thrilling adventures of the FBI in peace and war, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.